Hey everybody, this is Zach Stevens of Sabotage, TSO, and Archangel, and you are listening to That Metal Interview Podcast. Two words, Zach Stevens uh, returns to the show to promote Archangel's second album, properly entitled 2, Archangel 2, and uh, they have a brand new single out there by the name of Afterburn, and let's check that out right now, and we'll be right back with the interview with the great vocalist and frontman for trans Siberian Orchestra, Sabotage, and Archangel, Mr. Zach Stevens will be right back, this is Afterburn. <laughs>
Afterburn is what you just heard. You guys can stream it now. You guys can download it, purchase it. Uh, the album won't be out till April 11th. Uh, by the title of Archangel 2, appropriately as it's the second production from the project band. And there you had it, guitarist, producer, Mr. Aldo. Let me see if I can pronounce the last name correctly. Aldo Lonobile or Aldo Lonobile. So anyways, uh, extraordinary producer and guitar player right there uh, working with Mr. Zach Stevens, the tremendous, extraordinary singer and frontman for Trans-Siberian Orchestra, Sabotage, and of course, this project, Archangel, formerly of Circle to Circle, and we ask him uh, a Circle to Circle question, so check it out. Here is our chat with Zach Stevens. Enjoy. <laughs> Uh, so that was one of my questions right there. Uh, what part of the world are you at? But you just answered that. Yeah, South Carolina. Awesome. Uh, Columbia is the town that I'm from. And, uh, yeah, I've been here, gosh, back here about, I think, about 10 years. Oh, yeah? Something like that. Nice. From, uh, living in 22. That, that was after living in Tampa for 22 years. That's right, yeah. With the whole, you know, sabotage and yeah. TSO being, being basically from there. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so who knows? Yeah, might awesome. make my way back to Florida at some point. I'm not sure. You never know, huh? <laughs> you never know. So let's speak of your new album, Archangel 2, uh, dropping on April 11th, After Burn. I saw the video and the song is just badass. Uh, can you uh, talk to us about this new record? Lyrics, you know, riffs, uh, who does all that? All right. Thank you uh, on the videos, by the way. Yeah, we had two videos out there. Fortress was the first one. To the stars look bright upon your window Or when you're in my arms The first single, then we have this um, kind of dual um, lyric video featuring myself uh, in there. <laughs> yeah. That's the first lyric video I've done where I'm also in the video. So uh, that nice. was kind of neat. <laughs> That's something a little different, yeah. Yeah. I like the song. I like both of them. Um, what we do, uh, we started with, you know, the first album came out in 2020. That was Fallen. Yeah. And uh, had a video that did pretty well for the title track. Uh, but, you know, like many bands, you come out in 2020, but you didn't know that two weeks later, the pandemic was uh, coming. Right. It's horrible. Wow. So we came out in like February. I think we came out in the middle of February in 2020 and believe me two weeks later everything was closed yeah I remember that horrible World closed horrible situation World. yeah yeah it was bad so we're basically still kind of as as the entire music business is kind of adjusting to everything that happened at that time it's taken years and haven't really completely figured it out but the COVID thing's a little bit more in control um yeah but as far as what happened in the music business as far as costs you know, skyrocketing, Yeah. the price of tickets. Jeez, it was like, I wanted to see a concert, or, you know, I was telling my wife, I was like, you know, we were good, we would see concerts back around 2020 or, you know, right before the, right before they closed everything. And basically, I think they're like four times more expensive now for tickets. Ridiculous, I know, horrible. It's really weird that a pandemic could cause that. But yeah, yeah the music business has seen all kind of price increases. Uh, with everything, including touring and everything, but you know, uh, we'll just have to see how how it plays out over time. But yeah, everything's gotten like ridiculously expensive. But um, expensive, yeah. But the way we do the way we do it, uh, we got the same kind of process as the first album here on number two. Yeah. Um, everybody, you know, we got probably three, four, five writers. Now that includes a guest appearance and the fact that one of the songs, Quicksand was contributed by Chris Caffrey okay. of none other than Sabotage, TSO, Spirits of Fire. Yeah. And it just to tell you how things are in the background, the producer who produces Spirits of Fire is my guitar player, Aldo Lonobile. <laughs> so yes. oh, yeah. he, for Frontiers Records he produces several albums, uh, and does a quite a lot of, you know, songwriting in the back background. Yeah. For uh, for many of their you know, for a good number, I would say, of their artists. Uh, you know, he did, uh, he produced and was a, a contributing writer on when he did Jeff Tate's solo album, you know, Sweet Oblivion. Okay, yeah. So that's 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 Aldo. 
He plays guitar in Archangel, produces Archangel, produced Spirits of Fire, wow. and um, yeah, in Archangel. Just just to name a few, kind of you know, so you can see the little inner workings of the yeah of the family, so to speak, within that you know Frontiers label in Italy, in Naples is where everything comes out of. So okay, you know, they basically Aldo contacted me on behalf of Frontiers, you know, back in 2019, you know, and said, hey, you want to do some records? together he i knew about him from a band called secret sphere secret sphere thing yeah they played uh, oh, yeah. prog power yeah in Atlanta and everything and yes i'm really familiar prog band. oh yeah so you know there's gonna be a little of everything when it comes to archangel i mean we had um you know progressive you know i'd probably say a few more prog type songs on the first album uh, this second album got a little heavier so you know still got some progressive elements but it got a little bit more straight you know like metal hard rock you know if you will but okay yeah we keep um but the writing team the riffs like you said they come from aldo primarily and he writes along with our guy who does the synths and uh, some keyboard stuff antonio agate over there in uh in naples uh we get contributions from alessandro Del Vecchio, especially on the first album, I think he has a few things in this second album. Del Vecchio, yeah, very talented, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, great guy, and, and uh, you know, Aldo, of course, uh, with his guitar work, pretty amazing. Great, yep. Uh, he is, he's well influenced by Sabotage, by the way, because when he contacted me, he's like, I'm a huge Sabotage fan, like, he's in his, <laughs> I think he's in his mid-30s, he's a good 20 years younger than me, I, I think. Okay, yeah. Um, so... He, he, he has a big influence from Sabotage, which is cool. So I said, all right. You know, he was like, man, I've just been wanting to do a record, you know, do do some work with you for years. And I'm like, all right, let's, let's go. Because I, you know, like I said, I knew about his work and stuff. So it was kind of a no-brainer. I Yeah. So I do all the vocal melodies, you know, and all the vocal stuff. My wife, Catherine. Okay. He writes all the lyrics for Archangel for both this record and the first one. Okay, wow. And she came up with the concept and the title Archangel, or the band name, and said, and she was like, hey, have you ever heard of this thing called Gnosticism, which is like a second century religion? It's kind of a Christian religion. Yeah. But it has elements of non-Christian and Christian because it was, you know, somewhere around the, you know, we're talking about the years 1000s, you know, all those 1000 years AD. Yeah, okay. So very ancient um so it's kind of a complicated thing where they kind of believe that there's not one overpowering god you know there's more like these little lesser divinities that, that, and the, the humans are a little bit more in control even though they do need christ in terms of he's the only one who can pr- provide redemption of the human spirit okay understood yeah yeah so then they may have evident uh you know elements that are pre-christian before jesus but then they do have elements after it of course that's not really a you know religion that you really hear much of these days being that it's ancient and it's, it's kind of heretical yeah. you know um, so the archon is in there in that in that religious belief the archon is the only one who can take a message from the people of earth to the gods so to speak yeah there's only a few we're talking about demiurge which would be the guy that they think creates the world and who controls everything uh and then they got a you know one one lesser divinity called Gnosis who uh, controls um, esoteric knowledge, right? And then Christ reports to him. Okay. So it's kind of wild. Wow, cool, um, very cool. Christ boss is Gnosis, but then Christ controls you know the 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 he, he holds the only power of redemption of the human spirit, which everybody which people of the earth want, you know, I guess, or back at the time. So, wow. Or people who followed the religion. So it's kind of interesting. And the Archon is a winged, powerful, you know, man who can take messages from the people of Earth to heaven, you know, and he's yeah. the only one who can do that. So in our story, he we bring it to the modern time. So, of course, it's fictional as far as I know. I mean, yeah. I haven't seen an Archon land in front of me yeah. in the last 20 years. <laughs> I, I figure it's fictional. But, right. And I'd be scared if I did see one. Right. He goes, don't be making albums about me. Didn't you know this was prohibited? Oops, sorry. Yeah, that'd it's be... time for me to get a coffee and I'm out of here. No, that'd be but, scary, uh, huh? Yeah. I, <laughs> no, but so he comes down in modern day times to help us out with all our problems that we have currently here. You know, 
yeah. of the pandemic and all these people wanting to, you know, cause cold wars again. Yeah. And, and just all of the things, the political problems and all, and maybe he can help us out. So that's, that's kind of the concept. Yeah. So all of the songs of Archangel are stories in the life of the Archon. So it gives it a human element because he goes through things too. He goes through all of the problems of everybody, except he just has this overpowerful, you know, he's a powerful being that has inherited this power. Wow. Whether he wants it or not. Actually, we go into that whole thing. He might not have, in the first album, he didn't even want to be appointed the Archon, but then, it, you know, you don't have a choice. Yeah. You know, they could come up to you, James, and go, you are now the Archon for reasons <laughs> you became the bold. <laughs> You're like, wait a minute, no, I want to be a journalist and I want to, you know, yeah. hang out with my friends, drink beers and stuff. No, I'm just kidding. But, uh, <laughs> right? But no, I don't really have time for this Archon. You don't have a choice. You are now assigned. <laughs> so, That's interesting, yeah. So he didn't even, but now he's accepted it going into the second album. So, you know, you can just kind of check out the lyrics if you want to get, you know, deeper stuff for song by song. Very but, cool, um, very cool. Yeah. Well, for people asking, that's, that's very cool. That's what it is. Yeah. You know, we get the riffs from uh, Aldo. We get the songs almost completed, you know, almost completed. Maybe a little bit of arrangement things, you know, need to be done or whatnot. But yeah, uh, so, and then we get we get everything. And then me and Catherine there, we uh, she lyrics. gets going on the lyrics. And then I write the vocal melodies and we just kind of work and make sure that we're on the same page. And nice. it's very nice cool. because the, the final lyric draft really kind of like gives me the it gives me the, the icing on the cake, so to speak, as far as what I need to do with like little melody, you know, little things here or there and stuff. And I just kind of do what I always do. Yeah. You know, the vocal component. Yeah, very have cool. Fun with it. So you mentioned. Primarily have fun. Yeah. And secondly, take it song by song, which is the way I do it now. I just kind of take it song by song and try to get each song to the highest level it can be and then move to the next one. You know, it's not like I'm not looking at it like a whole, you know, 11 song, you yeah. know, thing anymore. I, I, I'm more or less kind of looking at it like hey let's just take it one song at a time one at a time so which is your favorite track on this new album mm. all of them <laughs> that, is that is a great question that i've been asked several times today imagine yeah. <laughs> oh i like i might be able to name a few i don't know god to save one i ugh. it's kind of like having to pick to kind i of... like i like afterburn okay yeah the new video, the awesome. new lyric video, I like that song for some reason. Yes. That sticks out. I also like Wake of Emptiness because it's a different kind of way to start an album, you know, rather than just come right out with the gall guns blazing. Yeah. We're kind of setting it up psychologically there. And then I, you know, Away From The Sun, just because we use an exotic scale in there, this is an Egyptian scale. Cool. It's not a typical, not a typical Western music scale. Yeah. I mean, all of us that grow up in the Western, you know, continent, yeah. Our hemisphere. We all grew up and pretty much everything you ever heard yeah. <laughs> falls in somewhere between six to eight scales, believe yeah. it or not. Right. There's not a really a lot. And then you know the world has three hundred and sixty two or either that or yeah, something like three hundred and sixty two scales. Oh wow. So yeah. you know, you're limited as far as only Western music to you know, you, there's three hundred and fifty plus more to go study that come from other parts of the world. We're limited, yeah. So, yeah, isn't that interesting? That much music can come from such a small um, group of scales. existing scales wow. uh, in the world. But, um, yeah, we talked about wanting to do something a little bit more exotic. So that might be something that we do more in the future. But, yeah, and, of course, the song being that it's a Middle Eastern scale, of course, this is like a Middle Eastern sounding song. And, yeah. you know, the Archon lands in the desert over there in Egypt and looks around at the pyramids and stuff that's been built try to look inside himself for some answers yeah uh, wow very cool maybe he can feel the power of the yeah very cool ascension maybe he can you know tap into the power of the ascension of one of the pharaohs after his death wow uh, and as he goes into the the to, you know to their gods and yeah. to their heavens and they've been adorned and they've been readied for the journey through their embalming process okay no <laughs> hey you're gonna say i've been watching too many of those Ancient uh, aliens, about yeah. Discoveries of the ancient of ancient Egypt. I really like that. Yeah, um, well, I, I do too. Those history shows a lot. Yeah, uh, very cool stuff, huh? Yeah, yeah, there has been a lot of them on lately. I don't know if you've yeah. been buzzing through uh, the stuff lately, like on Smithsonian and all those things. They've been really getting into this. I do. I guess yeah. they've been uncovering a lot of stuff lately in Egypt that they haven't been. You know, it's at a, 
higher pace now. Yeah, there's a bunch. All the new discoveries. There's a bunch of stuff, yeah. Very interesting stuff, all of it. New Kingdom. Yeah. So, yeah. So, that that just, that's kind of some of the things we were kind of diving into. So, uh, you mentioned a more rockish take on this new album compared to Fallen. Is that the the, the, the approach you guys took, or did, did it just come out like that, or...? Yeah, it sort of just came out like that. We did not sit down and ever have a meeting and say, God, we got to get heavier. Yeah. You know, <laughs> this has always yeah. been sort of experimental. Yeah. This whole Archangel thing anyway. Uh, and, it, you know, it definitely is coming from everybody's musical history, whether it be Aldo's or myself, you know, everything we've ever listened to kind of comes out. Yeah. Um, I think we got a good, strong group of songs and, you know, for every record, well, two records now, we there's more songs that don't quite make the cut, which I guess is a good thing. Yeah. Because that means we got some pretty strong material. So, um, so it just really came out like that. Uh huh. So are you and saying you have more than 11 tracks? And you're right. What was that? You say you have more than 11 tracks then? Yeah, we had left over about five songs. Okay. I think we had like 16 that we had to choose from and we had to kind of narrow it down. Nice. So maybe about five or five or six songs didn't make the cut. Yeah. So I think that's one reason that it may probably have gotten a little heavier, if you will. Okay. Um, because we just had so many coming from that vein. It was like, and with Caffrey, you know, giving us quicksand, oh, you know, that's going to be heavy, you know, because the stuff he writes is very damn heavy. Oh, yeah, he's great. That guy's a talent. Yeah, and if he's going to write stuff for Sabotage or, or anything, yeah, it's going to be bringing it from the, the earlier history. Um, it would be, you know what I'm saying, he would go for probably the earlier history of Sabotage if he was, you know, write something now. So that's cool because he's coming from that heavier vantage point. Yeah, Caffrey, yeah, I spoke to him uh, last year. Yeah, he's a great talent and a great songwriter. Very, very mm -hmm. awesome. So let me, uh, changing gears here real quick, uh, I saw a couple of guest appearances that you made with a couple of bands, uh, Jurgen Walzer's. Uh, Desperia, does that ring a bell? In a strange new home, unsure of what she knew, something caught her eye in that shadow room. Yes, yep. I, I, uh, very met cool stuff. Him very cool. A few years ago, and so he had this, this, you know, again, I'm kind of a, you know, I get interested in these wild concepts. Yeah. Uh, so he had this record, the, the story of Marion Dust, a lady, a, a girl, a little girl who can jump into a mirror. Oh, wow. Basically disappear and look and see all kind of wild entities of humanity. And it's crazy, but you'd have to <laughs> read up. Uh, it gets pretty deep. But uh, It's crazy. Um, yeah, so me, yeah. So Catherine and I teamed up on that, too. Okay. Uh, she wrote the lyrics for the songs I sing on there. I think it was like five. And that was started about two and a half years ago. So Jurgen has been working hard. He was looking for a label for the past nine or ten months. Okay. So that takes up time. So gosh, before you know it, stuff is stretched out. You know, almost to like you know three years. But yeah, pretty cool. I, I, yeah. He's great, and what a great guy, and, and a really nice guy. I met him through a guy named Marcus Pfeffer. Okay. Uh, who has a couple of bands, and I think I sang a song or two for him. Um, Marcus Pfeffer, Pfeffer okay. with a P. It's like a P in the front of it. P F E. Yeah. Then F F like Frank E R. But, and then he said, "I want to introduce you to Jurgen because Jurgen he's kind of a quiet guy and he's shy and you know he, he gets scared about reaching out to people like Zach Steven." I said, uh, "Wait a minute. People will tell you I'm not that scary. I'm a little bit scary, but I'm not anybody to be afraid of contacting." <laughs> right. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm, you're a cool guy. Like yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> like i'm not mean or nothing so right you know, it's yeah. like so he goes he goes i get it but i'm gonna go ahead and tell you if you could contact him you know and so yeah i did so nice. interesting. thank you yeah thanks for um notice of that one that that's crazy stuff yeah i heard that talk about pro he's very progressive to me yeah um good stuff he, he could be a prog guy and it's probably gonna get even more so i think he's gonna do another one Okay, cool. Uh, Very he's cool. He's telling me about doing another one that, 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 that he's going to start right in the middle of this year. So I'm probably going to hear from him. Yeah. Work on a few more songs. Very cool stuff, uh, for sure, yeah. Yeah, it's good. I learned something from that. It's, it's you know, gosh, with, with Desperia and Archangel, 
you know, it's this is pretty difficult performance. You know, this stuff's not easy. Yeah. And I think that's one thing that, that attracts me to it. I want to learn from it. And I, I try to, you know, still want to get better. You know, I'm, I know I've been in, you know, we're having the 30th anniversary of Edge of Thorns this year. Coming up, yeah. So now everybody knows how old I am. I, you know, I, I can't run from it anymore. <laughs> it's right, just, it's but, just a number. Yeah, that's true. I want to still feel like, you know, I want to still get better. Yeah. So both of these things have helped that. Um, definitely, you know, in, in, you know, expanding my horizons as far as, yeah, you know, the, the music stuff. So that's really what I'm looking for now, a challenge and. You know, just to make sure I don't get to, you know, resting on all the stuff that has been. You know, you can, after all these years, I think I can see how it is, you know, easy to kind of rest on the past, on the back catalog, but yeah, I don't really want to do that. Yeah. Um, so these are, you know, these 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 vocals on, especially with these two, they're, um, you know, they're they're challenging. You're you talking know? about Desperia and Archangel, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, real challenging. Yeah. So uh, progressive in some manner uh, from time to time, um, and we, uh, you know, I can definitely say that. I mean, yeah. I have in the studio. I have a great time doing it, but I'm just saying, you know, these vocals here. I mean, just for a new person to come try to pick it up and go, hey, I'm gonna go do, you know, that that could probably be a bit of a challenge. <laughs> it's taken me about everything I've learned in my <laughs> entire career to yeah. crank through these things. Um, but yeah, that's good. Yeah, I also heard. Uh, I listened to. Stranger Vision, and I heard Bloody Times. Other guest uh, appearances for yes. me, I guess. Yeah. Do you recall that? That's right. Yeah. Yeah, I had about six last year. Yeah. If I'm counting correctly, uh, of different bands and stuff, so there was probably about six, you know. They just kind of said, "Hey, you want to do something?" They sounded good, yeah. You know, as long as they, you know, uh, you know, it, they're impressing, yeah. You know, me and and you know, hitting a certain level, which they all did. I was glad to do it. Uh, all all pretty cool stuff. Yeah, very cool stuff for sure for people that don't know. Other... Yeah, thank you. Yeah, appreciate you mentioning it. Um, you know, we. That's what I just do all that stuff just to stay on top of the game. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, it was, you know, if I feel like, oh, I hadn't really, you know, done too much in three weeks or a month, if somebody, you know, contacts me, then that's a way to keep the chops up. So that's what I've been doing. So today marks the 18th anniversary uh, of your album, The Middle of Nowhere. Uh, circle to circle is there any update on that is that done with or do you have any plans for circle to circle currently we, we had a 13 year run with seven albums yeah and then it kind of just got you know financially harder you know mm -hmm. with the touring and stuff and um, we just kind of gave it a rest I mean I wouldn't say it's over for sure I mean anything can happen you know I still get inquiries about which is really cool about going and singing the songs of circle to circle like it you know like acoustic shows or yeah. festivals with a band or something like that so that's really flattering some good stuff get, yeah it's cool that i you know you forget that the music was you know pretty good and uh everybody did a great job everybody in the lineups that we had they they you know they tried and they strived for the best they can get you know what i mean and that really made a difference and then those songs live on i'm probably i get a lot of inquiries even to this day saying hey come play some you know circle to circle music which is you know makes me feel good you yeah because we all work hard everybody worked it you know um, all the writers all the people in the band worked equally as hard well you have a lot know, of fans you know you have a bunch of fans and we all wonder when uh, or if we'll ever see a, a circle to circle performance or something like that you know i saw an older that's true. i saw an older video of you on youtube uh you're jamming an acoustic version of Edge of Thorns in Sao Paulo.
in Brazil, right? Uh, people, yes. people were jamming and singing and everything. Uh, any plans for a for a solo tour? You know, maybe you do your catalog or anything like that. It's possible. Um, we're still wading through some of the cost issues that came, you know, since the pandemic. Everything's gotten so expensive, but I think it's totally possible. Yeah. Um, I'm looking for. I'm looking at opportunities every day. Uh, so it's definitely possible. And as far as circle to circle. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say that it's never going to happen again. That's ridiculous. I mean, there's there's chances that it could. Um, and it seems like demand is going up a little, you know, I don't know what it is. Yeah. I mean, people are just like listening to the music again or something. But um, Well, that tells you that it's good music. If that, if that trend continues, that's, that'll give us more of a shot. Yeah. Um, everybody, you know, I still talk to the guys once in a while, stuff like that, so... You know, um, that'd be great. We'll, we'll have to just look for a good opportunity and see what happens. So here's a different question, Zach. Uh, how is it different singing uh, with TSO compared to other bands like Sabotage or Archangel? How is it different there? Well, it's mostly similar. Okay. Um, it, you know, when I sing the Christmas songs, I mean, it just so happened that one of the ones that I did this past year, uh, which was on a record called The Christmas Attic. Uh, yeah. TSO, but it was the, uh, Christmas in the Air. Awesome stuff. Um, yeah. yeah, it was a new song for me. I, But what happened was they wanted to do it, but, you know, for whatever reason, other singers, they didn't want to really mess with it, though. I was talking to John. Oliva. And I'm like, yeah, to John Oliva. Yep, yep. We talk all the time. And, and he goes, I'll tell you something. The what, the song Christmas in the Air was going to be a, a sabotage song. Yeah. That was what it was originally for. Of course, it got changed a little bit to, to more fit the TSO mold, so it's not exactly the same song as it was on the original demo. Wow. I heard the original, and I went, wow. If you could hear the original, you could see where, you know, the, you know it was a bit different. It probably could have been a, a sabotage song. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, I'm so glad you told me that, because now I'm going to approach that song just like it was a sabotage song. Yeah. Wow. So that's what I did. <laughs> so it became like a crowd participation number real fast. <laughs> like, yeah, I love getting the crowd involved and everything. Um, and uh, I just saw some opportunities in the song, you know, to to get a response from these uh, these arena crowds. Yeah, big crowds. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, you know, I, we're doing two shows today. You know what I mean? Like we're, you know, it's the same as the West Band. I mean, we're playing to, you know virtually you know the exact same kind of shows yeah so you you know you could put fourteen thousand people in there twice a day you know on the you know on a tso show give you know any given night so i'm like man john i'm really glad you told me that now that answers every question in the world i'm going to turn that into a sabotage moment i didn't know that well that's very so, cool so now the question you know to answer your question um it's not any different at all uh about the same I, yeah. I sing i sing the tso songs that i sing just like i would if it was a sabotage show so there's no difference uh, and i i approach them exactly the same because i mean you know when you look at the history of tso tso came from sabotage yeah it just kind of morphed into the sabotage band name still stands alone and it's still a, a, a separate entity but yet everything got so busy with tso that it just kind of it encompassed everything, and then it left Sabotage sort of in no man's land. You know what I mean? Like it morphed. Yeah, it morphed into this. So now my vision, and I'm sure that a lot of, you know, tons of, you know, Sabotage fans would join me in this. Now I want the vision to go back to two bands. You know, it went one to one. Now I want it to become two. Okay. You know, TSO and Sabotage. So that's what we're working for in the back end to try to, you know, make that happen. It got, we've been sidetracked of course since you know the passing of paul o'neill who did so much for the band you know oh, our yeah. producer of course and that's been a really uh crazy experience and we've been reeling from that for sure um but we tso people everybody involved with tso has done an amazing job keeping what we think paul would want you know and keeping yeah. tso going in a big way so hats off to everybody there yeah. management band awesome people on the back end crew everybody must it be takes hard everyone yeah. must be hard yeah so, so now um you know we're starting to see the focus you know uh, which gives me some promise of the sabotage stuff at the back end you know coming together we've been meeting 
very regularly. We got a lot more. Do- we got more business done in the last two months of 2022 while we were all out there doing the preparation and the touring uh, for the you know the TSO winter tours. We got a lot of work done. Really. Got more work done with Sabotage than even in the whole time from 2017 to 2022, in my opinion. Are you speaking of so, new music, or are you talking about just ideas? Ideas, everything. Nice. Everything. Wow. Yeah, everything. So we're just trying to, there's a few things that are beyond our control that we're trying to, you know, get so, settled out, but shouldn't be that big of a deal. I think, you know, we're going to continue to work in a positive direction and hope to, you know, do that very thing. Bring, you know, Sabotage you know get get them back to the, you know the people in Europe and you know in America all over the world wow. that's a big job there for that band you got fans everywhere. practically all over the world everywhere yeah i see that everywhere. online even places we can't play i mean yeah. even places like Egypt or something where you can't really go there and play it's against the law we still have tons of fans there for so sure oh yeah we we understand the frustrations and and the you know so we're trying our best to get that back you know, out. hopefully we'll have some good news in that in the future. Wow, that's some great news right there. Thank you for the exclusive There's there. reason for promise, yeah. Wow, very cool. So, uh, I think Sabotage still lives through TSO. You just kind of said it. I mean, you got Middleton, you got yourself, you have Oliva in the background, you got uh, uh, Jeff Plate, Caffrey, you know. Basically, to me and, and the fans, that's Sabotage in a, a morphed version, right? Yeah. Everybody's still here. Um, we're not missing anybody. We got six. You know what I mean? We got three guys on the east. We got we got three on the west. And we got two in the east. Well, let me no, I got we got three. We got me, Caffrey, and Plate. Okay. Jeff Plate on drums. Out in the west, you got Johnny Lee and Al Petrelli, and the only one missing is John, and that's because he's a producer and he's not touring with the bands, but he's there. He's there, yeah. Wow. So yeah, it lives. exactly. We see it, you know. Uh, we, you know, we get it. Believe me. <laughs> <We're> like, <laughs> great point. Awesome. Um, so we're just working with that, and you know, hopefully things will move in a great, uh, continued, good proje- uh, trajectory going forward. So what's on your agenda, Zach? What's next for yourself here? Uh, I'm gonna keep doing press um, until the release date of this record, April fourteenth. Uh, and we uh, keep, but we're going to continue pushing these videos. Uh, Fortress, go ahead and watch Fortress and Afterburn for Mark and Angel if you hadn't already out there on YouTube. Uh, and that'll give you a good idea of the sound of the album. And there's a lot in between. Um, so we're just kind of working that right now, and nice. you know, just kind of getting ready for the, you know, for anything that might happen on the, you know, the back end for, you know, Sabotage. We're on call and wow. Working That's, on whatever I can. You know, there might be a little bit more dysphoria, like I said, coming up mid-year, songs to work on and stuff. So I'm just getting prepared to do a lot of recording this year, one way or the other. <laughs> right. Well, Zach, I appreciate your time. Uh, thank you for making time. And uh, awesome, awesome music with Ark and Angel. Uh, would you like to send a message uh, to your fans listening to this podcast? Yeah, I want to say thank you, every one of you, for an amazing bunch of music that you know we've been able to put out there and have it enjoyed you know going back to sabotage and circle to circle archangel everything i just want to send out a big thank you to everybody for you know giving it a listen and being so supportive all these years this year is the 30th anniversary of, of sabotage's edge of thorns so the fact that we've been out here been able to do it so long is a tribute to everybody out there who's been listening to the music and supporting us and we really appreciate it awesome zach uh, we appreciate your time and your talent and your music and we hope to see you on the road soon Zach appreciate that hey thank you so much James thanks for having me I'll talk to you soon man an absolute exclusive right there uh, now we know us Sabotage fanatics that there is music ready and the band is on standby as Zach just told us isn't that awesome news would it not be great to hear some brand new Sabotage material with Zach John Oliva Chris Caffrey, Jeff Plate, Johnny Lee Middleton, uh, Al Petrelli, a sabotage for us. And uh, there you go, some exclusive news. I guess uh, they got some music in the oven and it's ready to go, I guess. So we'll see. And uh, of course, his great job with Trans Siberian Orchestra. And and he's promoting his new project right now, a new album with Ark and Angel. Check out the song, the video, 
stream it, download it. The song is called Afterburn. So thank you guys for being a part of the podcast. Thank you for downloading. And thank you for choosing the best podcast in the world to be part of your life. Well, I'm just kidding about the best podcast, but it is to me. So anyways, i uh, just glad to be a part of your life. And uh, we get to chat some rock and roll together and chat some heavy metal together or heavy metal, as they say in England, right? So anyways, as far as me, your friend James uh, from the state of Texas, from the U.S. of A., we thank you one more time and don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell on our official youtube channel uh, that metal interview podcast and don't forget to keep it metal that metal interview